journey church and we're so happy to be with you this morning and excited to be with you guys in your homes and I would like to invite you guys to join us in a time of worship this morning song we could ever sing, worthy of every praise we could ever bring, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you. Jesus, a name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. And holy, there is no none beside you open up my eyes and wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those who around me Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of every praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. And the holy, there is no one there is none beside you open up my eyes and wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your love and lead me 
Good morning, Journey family. Good morning, all of you who are joining us this morning online. And for you who are guests and new to Journey, welcome and Happy New Year. Yeah, the holidays, it's been one of the craziest years ever. And I think everybody, as we come to an end of the, the holiday season, as we pass through New Year, you're like, goodbye 2020. And, so, you know, good riddance. So many of you are like so glad to see this past year over and it's like man i don't ever want to see another year quite like that and as we come to the end of 2020 man we're praying that this year is something really really different and let me just tell you a couple things about this new year that we're very excited about and that we just want to keep you informed on first of all um, we mentioned that we were trying to reopen in january and with the resurgence I think all of us currently know or have family members or friends or associates who have been either, you know, devastated by the COVID experience, have had family members or friends pass away. Um, I know just this past week, I know a number of close friends and family members. Um, my whole family has been just nailed by this and, and just uh, very, very sick by the COVID bug and there's just so many friends and relations that have had it or have passed from it. And we are just going to begin playing this by ear. So week by week, we just going, we're just going we gonna be watching this as the vaccine rolls out and as this huge upsurge from the holidays begins to subsist and die down, we're going to keep you posted at through our newsletter as well as our Facebook, Instagram and our webpage as to our plans. But at this moment, we're not 
stating a specific date for our reopening, but it will be um, hopefully by the end of January. And so just keep that um, keep keep that in mind as we prepare for the reopening that we are just watching what's going on around us. But that was our first announcement that we will be reopening. It'll just be maybe a few weeks further out as we watch and see what things are gonna be like. Next is that we're going ahead with our life groups. We're, we're just starting some several life groups. We have a ladies group that's gonna be getting financial peace that's coming. Um, in January, just towards the end of January, we need you, um, if you're interested, if you've ever had a desire to get your financial world in order, um, Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University is a fantastic opportunity for you to get squared away, um, to get some really realistic goals for your finances. And Randall Brookshire is going to be leading this. It's going to be online content. And we need you, if you're interested, to Get a hold of us right away at info at AB Journey so we can get you the materials. It's $129 per family, and that again goes directly towards the purchase of all of the materials and the access to the online experiences. So we'd love to hear from you. That's beginning at the end of the month, and we need to have your money and your registration by that time before January 29th. So be sure and let us know if you're interested. Info at avjourney.com and this would be a life changer. We also have some spiritual life and just connect groups starting. So if you're interested in that, any of those that are coming, let us know, email us at info at avjourney.com so we can get you the information about when the groups are meeting and all of that. So please stay, uh, stay connected to what's happening. Now, just some really good news. I know with all the crazy bad news, great news from the Elmore House. For unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. Yeah, that's right. Another Elmore has been born. Chase and Elle had their baby this past week. And our, our newest grandson, little Marceau Elior Elmore. And for those of you who don't know, that's, that's French. But basically, uh, Marceau is, is just a bundle of joy. Chase and Elle stopped by this just a couple days ago on their way home from the hospital with their baby. And I'm telling you, our lives, our house was just full of joy because with COVID and the holiday being totally different and family not being able to gather, um, it was just so delightful to have joy and happiness. And it was just so fun. The house was alive with laughter and gratitude um, at a safe and healthy delivery. Nothing reminds me of the beauty of what God intended, like new life, like this little one who's just so delightful, so beautiful, so innocent, so pure. And little Marceau just reminded me, this is what God wants life to be like. We, we, he wants it to be a celebration of his goodness, of his care, of his gift of life to each of us on a daily basis. But, but friends, here's the reality. Something happens to us over time. Our hearts take a beating because of the world we live in, because of the fallen nature. Our hearts become just bruised and calloused, and eventually they can grow hard. Um, our hearts become divided or bitter. Sometimes they attach themselves to lesser things, and God is squeezed out of our, our central place in our hearts. And it's interesting that God said when, when Jesus was asked what God wants most, he said, God wants your heart. He wants you to love him, heart, soul, mind, and strength. God wants to be the center. He wants to be in the middle of your heart. And friends, that's what I want to talk about today. That's, that's where I'm at with, with as, I, as I just look over the landscape of what's happening in our culture, in our world, in our community, and more specifically, in our church. Among those of you that we've had a, you know, the opportunity to talk with over the last number of months during the COVID kind of uh, disconnect and isolation, that so many of your hearts have just grown weary. Um, some of you talk about your heart growing cold, and I can just tell by just the number of folks who are no longer watching or connecting um, to our online groups or to the actual services. I know that we've just, we're just over it. And some of us, our hearts have grown cold. 
And friends, that's why I want to address this this morning. And, and as this new year begins to unfold before us, I don't know about you, but I, I just want more than a happy new year. I want more than just a happy new I want an entirely renew year. I need this to be a renewal of my heart year. I, I want a renewed faith. I want a renewed hope. I, I want a renewed vision for what the church is supposed to be in this crazy season. I want a renewed heart more than anything else. I think the church needs a renewed heart. And that's why, for some, Jesus' words, when we hear him in Revelation 2, 4, where he says, I have this against you, speaking to the church of Ephesus, that you've done all these good things, but your heart is no longer with me. You've left your first love. You've allowed other things to squeeze out the primary passion and focus of your heart towards me. For some of you, it's, it's not just that your heart has been disconnected from God or divided by multiple things. For some of us, I, I think it largely has to do with what Jesus spoke about in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Maybe you can relate to this. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, the King James says, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I think some of you can relate. It just feels like life is, is heavy. It's such a burden. And the isolation, the change in your career, the, the change in your finances, the change in your relational circles, the change in the church, the change in all of these things and the politics has left you weary and heavy laden. And so Jesus, maybe that's what's happened to your heart. Your heart is just weary. It's just, it's just burdened. It's just, it just wrung out and you just don't know how to feel anymore. So Jesus' words, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I find these words hauntingly simplistic and yet penetrating to the deep part of what I yearn for, what I desire, what I want for myself and for you. I, I think it speaks to the journey that I've been on. And with surgical precision, these words cut deeply into my heart and I feel them working inside of me as, as I long for my heart to be renewed. For my heart to be like Jesus' heart, he said his heart was humble and gentle. And towards God, it was always open and receptive. I, I want that for my heart again. I'll be honest, folks, I feel like my own heart has just taken a beating in this season, trying to discern what God wants, trying to discern what is best, trying to follow the laws and keep people safe, and yet at the same time yearning for connection and, and folks just not wanting to connect online and some of these other formats. And it's just, it's been hard. It's been hard. And I'm not saying my world is harder than yours. Mine, mine's very blessed, but I'm just saying this this passage is deep, calling unto deep, as David the psalmist said. It speaks to my heart that I want to, I want to see this year, I want to see this season as a renewal of heart. And I crave the beautiful simplicity of this idea, walking in the easy yoke of Jesus, walking so closely with him that I just, I take on his life of peace and joy and contentment. And I just feel that confidence of my relationship with him. And this is where I think the, the deep work begins in our souls. As we decide to throw everything else off, to, to look at who we really are, what's really become of our hearts, where we really are in our relationship with God. And we begin to press in and pursue seeking him first, renewing our first love putting ourselves back into the care of Jesus' easy yoke. Because the life of Jesus, the life he offers, isn't just, it isn't going to come to us just by believing the right information. We all know that theology is important and it's critical to get the right information. But the right information isn't in itself transformational. Otherwise, theologians and people in Bible college and all would be the greatest workers of miracles and the most faithful people of all. 
but is often not the case. What I experience is this, to experience the life Jesus offered. We have to live the life Jesus offered. We have to enter into this life to experience that easy yoke. It has to become an obsession. It has to be our first priority to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, to to have our hearts and affections attached to him, to pursue him, to make him first. To walk in the easy yoke requires that I slow down and I draw close and learn from him. I model my life after him. And this is what I'm calling us to this year. And so to kick off this new year and this new season, I want to revisit a passage where the Apostle Paul breaks down what his life was like as he was pursuing God in all the wrong ways. And then a revelation took place where he was transformed and he began to follow Jesus in a brand new way. And this is a passage I think describes a lot of us because To be honest, at times like these right now, like in the culture of our world and the shifting and the loss of the church with its dynamism and its power and it seems like its central focus and its heart, the church has lost so much. I I know a lot of pastors kind of resort to this prescription of self-righteousness. What people need to do is to do better, buck it up and and get get straight. and, and, And sometimes that's exactly what we need. But what I hear from Jesus' invitation, perhaps what many of us need right now, rather than just getting our spiritual act together, we need a renewed heart, which doesn't come from just trying harder and beating ourselves up. It doesn't come from trying harder, but it does come from drawing closer. And that is what I think Paul is describing in Philippians 3, 5 through 11. Let me read it for you. Paul, describing his spiritual journey, said, I was circumcised when I was eight days old. I'm a pure-blooded citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew if there ever was one. I was a member of the Pharisees who demand the strictest obedience to the Jewish law. I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church. And as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. How many of us can say that? I once thought that these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that One way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. Friends, Paul had discovered the secret of walking in joy, contentment, and confidence in Jesus. And it wasn't what we normally hear. Work harder, do more, be better. It was to make his greatest desire, his life's central focus, his number one purpose, to know Jesus, and walk by faith in his life. The total ambition of Paul's life is revealed in verse 10. It's boiled down to this sentence. I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ. And that's where I want to spend this year, friends. As I evaluate where I feel like I am and as I, as I try to get a grasp on where our church is, friends, at the start of this year, I want this, to be, I want this to be our focus. I want this to be the focus of the remainder of my life. And I want to invite you to join in, particularly in this next several weeks, 
And as a way to get us tuned in on this one thing, as a way to get us back to this focus of, I want to know Christ, I want to be one with Christ, I want to have life flowing through me in my relationship with Christ. To do that, I'm inviting you to join me on a 21-day faith adventure. And as I'm asking our whole church to join me in this spiritual adventure, we have been doing this for the last 10 years. This comes up on 10 years that we have been taking the first part of our year and devoting it to just retuning, refocusing, and zeroing in on what's most important, our relationship with God and putting it first. And that's what I'm inviting us into in this first bit of our year. And so for 21 days, I'm inviting you to join me for a spiritual focus, a renewal of our hearts through our energies um, toward fast, fasting and prayer. Fasting, this discipline of fasting, it's a powerful, powerful tool to help retune, refocus, and renew our spiritual lives. It's mentioned over 50 times in the Bible. Think of the heroes of the Bible. Think of the times that the, the world turned, literally turned, that the direction of life turned on the prayers of God's people. Think of the people who were the, the, just the powerhouses behind the great works of God in their generation and the fact that each one of them, each one of them had seasons of prayer and fasting where God responded in a powerful way. We think of Moses, the lawgiver, David, the king, Elijah, the prophet, Esther, the queen, Daniel, the seer, Nehemiah, the leader, Anna, the prophetess, Paul, the apostle, and Jesus, the Messiah, all of them, along with hundreds of others throughout scriptures, fasted and prayed and put their hearts towards renewing their passion for God first in their lives. And fasting is one of the most powerful ways people throughout history have recentered, refocused, renewed, recalibrated their lives to what matters most. So what is fasting? What, what does it mean? Well, simply stated, fasting is a spiritual discipline of denying ourselves physical food in order to develop, to pursue spiritual food. It's denying ourselves our physical appetites to focus on God. So fasting is basically setting aside something my body needs in order to pursue something my spirit needs. Communion with God, focused time, focused prayer, focused scriptural time. So I take my meal times and I take those times where I'd normally be appetite you know, towards you know, my body and I turn them as an appetite towards my soul where I feast upon God's word and I just spend that time pursuing him, seeking him, talking with him. I know fasting is countercultural. It's, it's not, although culture has adopted it as a, as a means of cleansing our bodies and renewing ourselves and all this, but in a spiritual sense, it's countercultural to deny myself anything. Fasting is saying, I'm gonna deny my appetite for a season. And after Christmas and the holidays, boy, that's, a, that's like the furthest thing from our minds. I've been, I've been doing anything but denying myself. I've been in, enjoying everything. And for anybody who gives us chocolates at Christmas time, God bless you and you're, you know, you're my favorite. I love this stuff. I love all the food. I get this box from the Billers every year, this breakfast box. And I'm telling you, it is the most delectable stuff. We have been blessed so much. And the denying myself is hardly on my mind during the holidays. But during this first part of the year, I think, we have, I think we have greater need than ever before this year to take some time away from the table, away from our normal community and away from the things that normally distract us, our television shows and all that, social media, and just to bring ourselves back to, God, what are you doing in your world? What are you up to and, and how can I participate in it? What is this season meant to be? <clears throat> so this season, friends, I'm inviting you to join me as we focus on God. And I believe there are people watching this today who are desperately in need of renewal right now. I think some of you, you want this so badly in your life and, and you're just, 
you feel like, man, I just got to do better. I got to do better. I got to do better. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to, I'm going to have these, all these, you know, you cover already starting in your list, even whether or not you call them, you know, what a lot of people call them, you, you have a list and you kind of like, I want to, I want, these are my priorities. You call them something different just so it doesn't sound like you're going to fail at, you know, at your list. But I'm, I have these new priorities. I have this new focus and friends. That's all great. But as Paul said, I think the, I think the heart of this is what Paul said, man, I tried the self-help thing. I tried the fix myself thing. I tried the pursue perfection thing in my human nature. And I got about as close as anybody could get both from my lineage, from my heritage, from my upbringing, to my personal disciplines, to my fine-tuned focus on everything righteousness, I discovered it's not enough. What I need was to really be in communion with Jesus. What I need is to have a daily, abiding, ongoing, intimate connection with God so that I, by faith, take on his righteousness and I walk in joy and confidence and contentment in that relationship. And friends, one of the ways we get there is by just tuning in and refocusing through fasting. <clears throat> Life batters our hearts. It leaves them hardened or numb. And I know it's hard to figure out the best way to go about things. And, and again, it's, fasting is not a magic bullet. It's not a magic anything. Fasting is simply a tool that people have used throughout human history to bring their attention from one thing to a another thing. And that, that thing is to God and to what he has to say to us, to really pour ourselves into the scriptures where Jesus just talks about life and what he's inviting us into and how to live it. And we just focus in on that. And all throughout scripture, <clears throat> people who were desperate for breakthrough, desperate for renewal, who needed help from God or wanted their hearts to be just returned to its first love, they used this powerful tool. Now, there are different types of fasts and different ways to go about this, but, but just for today's time, um, I'm going to give you three primary fasts spoken of in Scripture. There's the absolute fast, which was only to be taken on. That is absolutely nothing. No food, no water, no anything into my body for a short period of time. And that was only either God directed, like when he directed Moses up on the mountain or Jesus into the wilderness, or when it was an absolute critical necessity, somebody was going to die, this, you know, as in Esther's situation, that is an absolute fast. And again, that was only to be taken on in absolute emergencies for the time God declared. <clears throat> then there was the normal fast. A normal fast is what we see most commonly in scripture, where that is no food of any kind, but just water. So water is consumed, lots of it, and this was what we see in ancient Jewish life and in the, the New Testament among the Christians. And then there was finally the partial fast. So we have the, we have the absolute fast, then we have the normal fast, and then there's another thing called the partial fast. And usually that involves giving up particular food and drinks uh, for a specific period of time. And a lot of people call this the Daniel fast because Daniel was one of the people in the scripture mightily used of God who practiced this kind of fast um, for a season, for three weeks. And he ate nothing but fruits and vegetables for three week time period till God spoke and worked in his behalf. Now, Daniel was a guy in the Bible who his 21 days was basically a response to something that was happening in his world. What happened was, in the book of Daniel, we read that the King Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians came in and captured God's people. They had strayed from God. They'd begun worshiping other false gods. They had turned away in, in perversion, in their own morality and sexuality and all of these things. They had begun worshiping gods with the sacrifice of their own children. There was just, in, in fire, there was, there was all kinds of wickedness that had taken place. And the response to that, God removed his hand of protection and blessing much as we see happening in our world. <clears throat> and there was then this, just this onslaught of the evil. Babylon came in, conquered Israel, and they took captive many of the people to Babylon. Most of the people of Israel were taken to Babylon. So Nebuchadnezzar selected some of the best and brightest young men from each of the countries he had conquered. 
and he brought them in to a special training as he was gonna have them used for some of the elite among his uh, capital and among his rulers in his nation. And among those young men, Daniel was selected. And they were to be given a very specific diet of all the delicacies and the greatest foods and all of these things from the land of, of the Babylonians. But Daniel decided that he had a vision for the life and impact he might have, that God had impressed him, that he was to be different. He was to stand out from these others. And so Daniel separated himself for a time for 21 days. He said, I won't eat anything but fruits and vegetables. He got special permission to go on this fast where he sought God and he pursued God through prayer and fasting and this limited diet until God spoke and worked mightily through him. Daniel set his heart towards God for 21 days and at the end of Daniel's fast, God did mighty things and it changed him and it changed everyone around him forever. And with that as our backdrop, we're gonna, we're gonna go on a, on a three week total fast, um, like it'll just be a normal fast. I'm inviting you to, to join me. And we've done this again for the last number of years where we as a church start off our year in just retuning our hearts. So this is what we're going to do this year. Between you and God, you decide what you feel is appropriate. This is not a guilt trip. This is not something that everybody has to do the exact same way. But friends, if you sense that your heart has in any way drifted, has grown cold, has been beaten, has been abused, has been whatever, has been divided, has been grown a little cool towards your passion, your fire towards Jesus and towards your relationship with him. If you feel like your heart is in, t in need of a tune-up or a renewal, I invite you to join us for this time. What I want you to do is for 21 days, take a portion of your time Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I mean, it can be all three, um, depending on your work and personal health issues and all those things. You take some time. You set aside food and you deny yourself that in pursuit of your spiritual renewal. And this season, I, I just pray, it's between you and God, but I'm, I'm asking you to join me, particularly for the first three days. We begin January 10th, so it's not happening this week. We're gonna start next Sunday, January 10th, with our fast, and I'm inviting everybody for three days to do the fast that's a normal fast. That means for three days, eat no food, just just water, just take water. And for some of you, you may have to have juices or you, it may require that you have a bit of food if you're in a physical kind of work or if your health does not permit this, I understand. And again, no guilt trips, just we're inviting you to join us for the first three days of a normal fast, just water only. And in pursuit of God that we spend lots and lots of time in scripture reading, reading all about Jesus and his call to this new life and what it looks like to follow him and to walk in abundance of life with him. Reading all through John, the later portion of the book of John, it's all about abiding and, and how to stay connected to him. We just, we just want you to join us for this. But, but I wanna just make clear three reasons we do not fast. We, here are three things that people think, oh, this is a great thing, but this is not the focus of our fast. It, it's, not, it's not to lose weight. Although I'm really excited that I get to drop some of the extra weight I've put on. It's a nice side effect. It's certainly not the, the main uh, motivation. Second is we don't do this to punish ourselves. It's not somehow that God takes pleasure in us being, you know, abusing ourselves or look, it's like those, those um, uh, pagan religions where they beat themselves, they crawl on their knees or whatever. And just so that God, God takes note of our self abasement and our self abuse and somehow that's to get God's attention. Well, that fits a lot of the false gods we see throughout life and throughout our world, but not our God. Our God wants our hearts not to abuse ourselves. <clears throat> I think it's interesting that in Yom Kippur, uh, the Jews fasted to remember the atonement. They would slay the lamb. And the family, basically, they, they literally had to look upon this to remember the cost of sin. The punishment of sin is death. And that it's like God has poured his wrath upon a spotless, sinless lamb, Jesus. And it's a reminder. And Yom Kippur was basically the reminder of how ugly sin is and how painful 
the consequences, how wicked and wretched sin really is. And the fasting, basically, it's, it helps resurface those areas of life where we've compromised, where we have sinned, where we have come up short, where we have gone against God's plan, and we have looked, you know, basically, um, we have been the ones to bring about the abuse, the death of the lamb. When we fast, it, we become aware of some of our sin. Some of those things begin to surface in our own life. And as we fast, it's not so God you know, takes pleasure in, in our pain. It's because we need to be reminded what sin is and how much it costs God to take and redeem us. We don't do it so others notice it. It's Jesus said, hey, when you fast, and, and Jesus assumed we would. He didn't command it, but he said he assumed we would. He said, when you fast, don't, don't change your look and don't do your normal routines. I mean, brush your teeth, do your hair, get dressed, and get up and put a smile on and go about your daily life with nobody knowing. Don't draw attention to it. Oh, I'm fasting. Uh, you know, it's not that you have to keep it a secret, but God says what's done in secret will be rewarded. He will reward that openly. So it is meant to be between you and God and not meant to be some big thing that gets attention. So why do we fast? A couple reasons. We fast, first of all, to renew our hearts and our primary desires. We do it to renew our heart's desires. Have you ever wondered how you grow in love for God. If God says he wants you to love him, heart, soul, mind, and strength, well, how do we do that? How do you grow your love for God? Well, David said it this way in Psalms 37, four. He said, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. He said, learn to take delight in God. You've gotta, you've gotta grow close to God. You've gotta get in close and learn about what it means to delight in God to just be in relationship where you get up in the morning and you watch a sunrise, or you sit quietly in nature and you, you just enjoy some of the beauty of God's creation and you just delight in God, just in thankfulness and gratitude and joy. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires. He will retune, he will realign the desires of your heart. Friends, God understands the deepest longings of our hearts. He's put many of them in there. And what he desires most is that our hearts would seek him first. That unless we seek him first and make him our greatest treasure, friends, we will never find true happiness because truly our hearts will never be at home until they are fully, fully in love with God and putting him first. If we seek anything else first, it will just create a greater and greater suction. It creates a vacuum and we need more and more and more and more. And pretty soon we realize that it never satisfies. It is the heart that takes delight in God, that puts him as their central focus, that makes him their, their first love, that truly finds happiness and joy and delight and confidence. And that's why we do it. It's so that our desires will be realigned with him, that our focus will be him. Fasting is saying no to what our bodies desire so that we can attend to what our souls desire. It's not easy. Friends, fasting is not easy. Some people discover very few things more difficult than fasting, pushing away from the table. But when you fast, it's not only abstaining from food, it's, it's abstaining from things <clears throat> that we take delight in that, that draw our delight away from God so that you leave the commotion of normal activity, <clears throat> normal, normal life to really attune your heart again. To God. That's why reading the Psalms is such a wonderful thing. It just renews our heart, our delight in God. In the first few days, you're going to feel burdened. It's kind of weary and worn out. You'll be fighting the physical thing. But I believe that many of you who are watching, you're watching today because you want something new in your life. You want a breakthrough. You want God to, to do something great this year. You don't know where to begin. The Bible talks clearly throughout scripture that when people felt that they were disconnected from God or felt like they need something really new in their lives, <clears throat> they would pursue him through prayer and fasting. That's the invitation. Another reason we fast is because fasting prepares us for what God is about to do. When you fast at the beginning of the year, you're basically setting the course for the entire year. It's like you're setting your sails towards God and saying, God, I want what you want. I want your greatest work in my life this year. 
And I love that Luke 2.37, Dr. Luke reveals a powerful truth from the Christmas story. He said, Anna never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Now, Anna was this 84-year-old lady who had lost her husband, so as a widow, she devoted her life to pursuing God and to finding out what God wanted. And, and she had heard the prophecies about Messiah coming into the world. And she was sensing that God was about to do something new. So she fasted and prayed and she spent her time waiting for Messiah. Do you know why she was fasting? She was fasting to position herself for God's next move, for God's greatest moment in her life. And I truly believe that great moments are ahead for the church. I truly believe in spite, because of the culture of our world, because there are so many who have grown cold, who have walked away, who have turned their backs, because so many have now positioned themselves as you know, anti-church, anti-Christian, anti-God, because there is such a pushback, I believe that is when God does some of his, it's only in the greatest darkness that the brightest light shines. That's when the light is most bright, when it's darkest. Friends, I believe that in this coming year, great moments of God are in the works. I believe God's up to some amazing things and you can be part of it. You can be among the people that God uses in this season to bring renewal, revival, his kingdom and his righteousness. And Jesus said, blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Friends, if you're hungering for this, if you make your appetite to know and walk with God and walk in his kingdom righteousness, man, he said, he's gonna, he's gonna provide you an answer. And at this time in history, what we find is that as Anna waited on God as she spent her time in prayer and preparation. God worked and brought the Messiah. And right while she was in the temple, there were people coming and going from the temple that whole time. But as Jesus was brought to the temple, she got to experience Messiah firsthand. She got to lay her hands on the one true God and, and hold this one because she was prepared. Friends, that's what fasting does. It prepares us for what God has next in store. Another thing, <clears throat> fasting breaks loose things in the spiritual realm. Fasting, fasting breaks things loose in the spiritual realm. At one point, the disciples were away from Jesus. He had sent them out to do the work of the kingdom, away from him to learn as his apprentices. And so they were practicing this, but they come back to Jesus and they said, Jesus, we ran into this situation where we found somebody who was possessed by demons, but we did everything we were, we were told to do and we couldn't cast them out. Why couldn't we get the demons to, to leave them? Why couldn't we take power over this realm of the spirit? Why was there not enough power? And Jesus said, this kind comes out only by prayer and fasting. This kind, this situation takes extra power. And that only happens through prayer and focused life fasting. It's like, guys, there's a certain spiritual reality that I, I don't fully understand. I won't pretend that I know all that's going on in the unseen world, but there are certain powers that will not respond just to normal treatments and normal types of things. They're only broken, they're only taken captive through the special focused times of prayer and fasting. Isaiah 58, considered the fasting chapter of the Bible. And in it, it says that the fast that God desires will loose the bonds of enslavement. People who are bound in addictions, people who are stuck with pornography or or other types of things, alcohol and drug use, people that are in abusive relationships or relationships that dishonor God and need freedom from those things, freedom who are in the soul crushing grip of one of these things, it says they can't break free from their by their own strength. They need they, they just maybe from unforgiveness, from a hurt that they've suffered, or from bondage of a past experience. They need hope, they need life, they need joy. Well, when we fast, the bonds of the evil one begin to break. It's like we begin chipping away at the chains and we just, the power of God is unleashed. The inner person, Paul calls our, calls our spiritual man, begins to get stronger than the inner person known as the flesh man or, or the fallen nature. And we begin to grow and see spiritual breakthrough. Also, if you really wanna gain power to change some area of your life, as you fast, be sure to focus your prayer time on that. Begin, begin to take on scriptures that speak to that area of your life 
and to apply them, to believe them, to practice them. When Jesus was starting out his ministry, he spent 40 days in the wilderness, 40 days without food. During this time, Jesus was tempted by the devil three times. And Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written. Man, he focused in on the scriptures. He used the scriptures. Fasting is gonna, it's gonna reveal some of your weaknesses. It's gonna reveal some of your tempta- temptations and your tendencies to run to other things for comfort, to run to other things for satisfaction, to run to other things for fulfillment. It's gonna reveal some of those things. And as it does, remember Jesus, Jesus' example. It is written, it is written. Get to the scriptures, find scriptures that can help you fight this battle because that is where you get your power, the spirit, the sword of the, of the spirit, which is the word of God. <clears throat> so here's what I've discovered. You, you don't usually get blessings on the fast. Usually blessings come after the fast. During the fast, it's tough. It's, it's a battle. I mean, some beautiful things happen during, but a lot of the time we see the breakthroughs after it's over, after we've worked our way through that time of just refocusing, renewing, things begin to break loose. And I just say that the enemy will not be happy about it, so prepare for some resistance. Prepare for that. Because anytime the people of God are unified on anything, the enemy wants to destroy it, distract them, divide them. And so discourage them. I know he will use all the four Ds against you. So be prepared for that. And know that God is going to work in spite of those things. And the evil one doesn't want it. <clears throat> so some final thoughts about the fast. Again, this is not meant to be a manipulation. It's not meant to be a guilt trip or some bondage. Again, we're not commanded that we have to fast a certain number of times, a certain number of days. Or, But Jesus assumed it when he said, when you fast. Friends, this is part of the normal practice of Christians throughout the ages. And this is just one of the ways that we get ourselves ready for what God is doing next and invite him to renew our hearts. Again, another thing is if if you have health issues, please consult your doctor, consult your medical professional. If if you have questions about how this will impact you, um, people with diabetes, cancer, blood issues, COVID, all of these things. Again, consult your physician. You may not be able to do a total food fast, so you might have to substitute broths and juices and um, maybe just the Daniel plan kind of thing. Um, Maybe try fasting other things like TV and social media and, and internet and whatever it is, coffee, some things that also um, are, are areas where you just normally would focus time and delight and focus attention and, and use those. Use your meal times as prayer times. Um, use your hunger cravings to prompt you towards spiritual things. The whole point is relational intimacy. So be sure you don't just skip food. It's, the point is not just to make myself you know, feel pain. The point is to renew your hunger for the spiritual parts. So allow those, those hungers that you're feeling physically to, dr- to drive you into a deeper walk with God, times that grow. Um, download the YouVersion Bible app and start one of the reading plans. They have tons of reading plans sp- specifically focused on the fast. And friends, by the way, um, go online and read up about fasting and the basics of this. And we will have lots of things going through our social media and our webpage to guide you. We will have daily devotionals. We will have readings and opportunities for you to just grow in understanding of what fasting is and why you're doing it and how to how to have an, a successful and enjoyable experience. Um, and one final thing, find a prayer partner, a fasting partner, find somebody else that you're just gonna share your experience and your journey with. Um, somebody that you can share your prayer requests with. Somebody you can tell why you're really fasting, what you want most out of this fast, what you're yearning for, and what you feel like God um, wants to, you know, is, is calling you to do this for. Share, write some of these things down. Write your greatest prayer requests down, your greatest desires down. Write some of these things down and share them with a fasting partner, um, a prayer partner during the season. And friends, from my family to you and, and just all the family of Journey, I want more than anything for Journey, for you, for, for your heart to be renewed this year. I'm not saying Happy New Year. I'm saying Happy Renew Year. This is a chance for renewal. 
And our church needs it. Our world needs it. I need it more than ever. And I'm just praying, friends, that as we watch the year unfold, that we would not just be spectators watching this world collapse, watching this world go crazy, but but we would be central to what God is doing in this crazy season of our lives. This is our moment. I I just pray, friends, that you would join me for this, that you would pray, ask God to deepen your love and passion for him. Ask God to reorient your life around seeking him and and hearing his voice and following, obeying him. Ask God to guide you as you seek to apprentice your life to Jesus and remove those areas that are weakening you and your witness and your power and literally dividing your heart and renewing your focus towards him. Ask God for wisdom for major life decisions. Ask God to provide for your needs and those around you. Ask God for healing, for miracles. Friends, this is a season, I believe, for miracles. I think the church has been powerless for too long. We've been busy with and occupied with silly secondary things. This is a time to seek God in power. Let's pray that God would reveal himself in power and just pray corporately for our culture, our country, our leaders, our world, that God would... He would just pray the words of Jesus that his kingdom would come, his will would be done on earth as in heaven. Friends, I'm gonna close in prayer. Over the next couple weeks, we're gonna unfold this more and more as we go into this New Year series, and I just pray that you'll join us. Make this time a commitment that you're gonna continue to be online with us for service, even if you have to watch it at a separate time. you, You will be a part of this, and you'll be seeking God with us for this season. I love you guys, and I can't wait to see you. We'll keep you posted as to our opening dates as things unfold in the next few weeks, so please keep an eye on our media and all that. But in the meantime, friends, I'm praying for you. My fast, my prayer times, I'm praying for you. So if you have special prayer needs, send them to us at info at AV Journey. Let us know how we can be praying for you during the fast. January 10th through the 30th, 21 days. Join me for that. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for what you're up to in your world. Thank you that you've invited us to participate with you, that we're not just spectators and we're not just here clean, hanging on by the, you know, like just by our fingernails. We're not just trying to survive it, but we're actually here as witness to the world of what it looks like when people are in relationship with God. That we have a confidence, a peace, we have a strength, but we have a joy that comes from what Jesus said, when we take the easy yoke of Jesus and learn to walk in it. When we quit trying to depend on our own righteousness, but we learn to walk in obedience, in faith, in the power you give us. God, I pray this would be that kind of a season. We pray that you would work mightily in us as a church, as individuals, and then in our culture. Let us be the light in this darkness. And we pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Can't wait to see you again. In the meantime, let's uh, close with a worship song together and we'll see you next Sunday. I want to be close, close to your side. So heaven is real and death is a lie. I want to hear voices of angels above singing as one. Hallelujah, holy, holy God Almighty, the great I am, who is worthy.